In this video, we're going to complete example four, and we're going to factorize the following expressions by grouping. And when you factorize by grouping, now when you look at each of the four questions here, you might notice that every expression has one, two, three, four terms. And when you see an expression with four terms, like you see here, that's a good indicator to you that you need to factorize by grouping. So what does that mean to factorize by grouping? Well, first of all, I need to revisit some things that I taught you when expanding expressions. Let's take a really simple expression such as x plus 2, x plus 3. What do you do when you expand this expression? Well, I've taught you many times to look at the first set of brackets and split it in two. You're going to split it into x and also plus 2. And next to each of these terms, I'm going to put the second set of brackets. I'm going to put x plus 3 and x plus 3 again. And then I taught you to multiply them and expand them. x times x gives us x squared. x times positive 3 gives us plus 3x. Positive 2 times x gives us plus 2x. And positive 2 times positive 3 gives us plus 6. Now usually I get you to go one last step and I get you to combine the like terms in the middle. But I don't want you to do it this time because we actually want an expression with four terms. One, two, three, four terms. Now this is an example of expanding. So what sort of example would you do if it involved factorizing? or factorizing by grouping. Well, you would be given an expression with four terms, such as the one to the left down the bottom, x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 6. And when you factorize this, you will get x plus 2, x plus 3. Now this is really easy to do when you've got the answer on the left, but how do you do it when it's not so obvious? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to rub this out, and I'm going to show you how to factorize this expression with four terms. And you factorize it by grouping. You group this into two parts, the first part on the left and the second part on the right. And you just focus on each part separately. If I was factorizing x squared plus 3x, what would I get? Well, I'm going to take a factor of x out. And then I'm going to get x plus 3 in my brackets. x times x is x squared. x times positive 3 gives us 3x. So I've been able to factorize just this first group here down below. Now I'm going to factorize my second group. What's a common factor for 2x and 6? Well, my common factor is 2. And to be more specific, it's positive 2. And in my brackets, I would have x plus 3. 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6. You might have noticed when we expanded, we took one set of brackets and we wrote it down twice. And then we took the other set of brackets and separated the two terms like so. So all we need to do is do this, but in reverse. This time we'll take our two sets of brackets and we'll write it down once, x plus three. We'll then take our two terms, our x and our plus two, and put it back into one set of brackets. So you may have noticed when we factorized this expression, 
we did the exact same thing as when we expanded, except in reverse. And that's what you do when you factorize by grouping. All right, so let's get right into our example now. We're going to factorize by grouping. So for question A, we're going to separate this into two groups and we're going to factorize them separately. So for the first group, I can take out a factor of 2x. And I multiply 2x by x to make 2x squared. And I can multiply 2x by 1 to get 2x. Then looking at the second group, I can take out a factor of 3 to be more specific, positive 3. And I would also multiply 3 by x plus 1 in order to get 3x plus 3. And the beauty of this is both sets of brackets are the same. And when this occurs, we take the two sets of brackets that are the same and turn it into one set of brackets. And then we look at our two terms that are separated, the 2x and the plus 3, and we group them together to make one set of brackets, 2x plus 3. And that's question A factorized. Okay, looking at question B, same thing again. We've got two groups here. We've got AC plus AD. And then the second group, which I'll actually put in green, is negative CB minus DB. So we're going to treat these minus signs as if these are negative terms. So we'll start with the first group, AC plus AD. They share a common factor of A. So I'm going to write that A down. And inside my brackets, I'm going to have C plus D. A times C is AC, and A times D is AD. Now I'm going to look at my second group, and because it's got the two minus signs, it can be a little challenging for some people. But there's one thing that I do know. I know that my second set of brackets really needs to be C plus D. I want my two sets of brackets to be exactly the same. And if I do that, all I've got to do is think, what would I put here so that when I expand it, I come back to what I have underlined in green? Well, you notice they share a common factor of B. And I'm going to put up here minus B. And I'm just going to double check it. Uh, minus B times C is minus CB, it's the same as minus BC, and minus B times D also gives me minus DB. So I can see that this is correct. And now because my two sets of brackets are the same, I take those two sets of brackets and write them down just once, and then I look at my two terms, the A and the minus B, and I write them down in one set of brackets. Let's now look at question C. Once again, I need to split it into two groups. We'll call it the red group and the green group. So looking at my first two terms, what's the common factor I'm going to pull out? And I'm going to pull out B squared and then have my set of brackets. And I'm just thinking to myself, what would I multiply B squared by to get B cubed? Well, I'd multiply it by B and then I need a minus 2, because b squared times minus 2 gives me minus 2b squared. Now looking at my second group here, I know that I really want my second set of brackets to be the same. I want it to be b minus 2. And I know that negative 2 times negative 5 makes positive 10. So I reckon this is a minus 5. And I'm just going to double check uh, minus 5 times b is minus 5b, and minus 5 times negative 2 gives me positive 10. So that's looking great. And because the two sets of brackets are the same, they're b minus 2, I'm just going to write them down once. And then I'm going to write my other two terms down in the other set of brackets. b squared and minus 5 gives us b squared minus 5. All right, we'll move on to our very last question, question D. Once again, two groups. 
one in red and one in green. Okay, so what, what are my common factors here? Well, there aren't really common factors for two and three, but I'm going to take the C with the lower power, the C squared. So I'm going to write C squared. And if I want to make 2C cubed, I need to multiply C squared by 2 and C. And then I'm going to write plus 3 because 3 times C squared makes 3C squared. Now I know that my second set of brackets really needs to be the same. It needs to be 2C plus 3. And to make minus 10C, I would multiply 2 by negative 5. So I reckon this would be negative 5 here. And negative 5 times positive 3 also makes negative 15. Excellent. So I'm going to have two sets of brackets. One with C squared minus 5, which I've taken from my two terms here. And the other one, which is going to be the same as the two sets of brackets, the 2C plus 3. Now, before we conclude this video, I just want to point something out. You were told to factorize by grouping. And you're not always going to be told to do that. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a good indicator of when you need to factorize by grouping is when you see four terms written in the expression. It's not always going to be the case, but if you see four terms, that says to you that it's probably factorizing by grouping. Anyway, that concludes our video on example four. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.